Hey guys, today we are going to be looking at this Macintosh Classic that I got for free, along with the Image Writer 2 and, wait for it, Macintosh Mouse. The Mouse and Image Writer will be getting videos of their own. To test the computer out, I'm going to be using this Apple Design Keyboard that I got at Goodwill a few years ago in the United States. The last thing we'll need is a standard PC power cord to plug the Mac in. Now that it's plugged in, let's turn it on and see if it works. And the screen doesn't seem to be working. We get the startup sound, but nothing else. Let's take it apart. The first thing we're going to do is unscrew the four T5 Torx on the back of the case. And then, with a little bit of wiggling, you can just slide the front right out. Once the back is off, you can immediately spot what's wrong. The little board on the back of the electron gun has just fallen right off, so reattaching that should fix the issue of no picture. But first, before I touch anything, to be safe, I'm going to discharge the CRT. To do that, you can attach an alligator clip to a flathead screwdriver and attach the other end to a grounding point on the computer. If you hear a loud pop, that means that it's discharged. If not, that means that it already has been discharged from sitting. You'll want to carefully put the end of the screwdriver under the suction cup on the anode and make contact with the metal. And the CRT was already discharged, so we're safe. Now I can reattach the board back to the CRT and we'll see if it works. We're still getting the startup sound, so that's a good sign we didn't break anything. The CRT is actually working. And it boots. That wallpaper looks kind of familiar. I think it reminds me of the Maxell high fidelity ads. So after sitting for a few seconds, it just automatically goes into a screensaver, which is kind of strange. But it works, and I'm happy. Now, let's clean the whole thing off. Now, let's take it apart again so we can retrobrite it. Time to discharge the CRT again. This time, I'm going to be wearing some blue gloves just for safety in case there is a charge, but I don't know if they'd honestly help. So now, I can just connect the alligator clip to a grounding point, then slide the screwdriver under the suction cup and make contact.
To take it off, you can squeeze the two sides and then lift it up at an angle. The next step is to carefully extract your hands from the blue gloves that are way too small. Starting with that little board we had to put back on to make the computer work, we're disassembling everything. Now it's time to fill up the bucket with some hydrogen peroxide and water. Now that it's nearly full, we can put in the MAC parts and let it finish up the filling. You want to make sure that everything is fully submerged in the water. After it's full, you can put some saran wrap on top to keep in the heat and stop all the hydrogen peroxide and water from evaporating. While we're waiting for that, we can clean up the board from the computer that I took out. Luckily, none of the electrolytic fluid has leaked out of the capacitors. The analog board is looking surprisingly clean and no solder cracks. Now, it's time to clean the floppy drive, which is looking really dirty. I skipped the reassembly because none of the footage was good. Luckily, it still works after being fully dismantled. Now, what you've been waiting to see, the finished product. 
Here it is, the fully restored Macintosh Classic. The only major cosmetic issue is a small crack on the bezel in front of the screen. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.